they say you don't have to be crazy to drive this road, but it helps. These Colorado mountain crawlers will guide you through it. Hey there, my name is Dewey Jones. I'm a Colorado off-roader, and what we do on this channel is that we film trail guides, showing you the trails from start to finish, the obstacles, how to do it, everything that you need to know to decide if the trail's for you. Now today we are doing one on Black Bear Pass, and I want to get right into it. This is one that has had a lot of rollovers, a lot of issues with it, so we really feel that we need to make a good trail guide for you guys. We're going to show you all the obstacles, but we'll talk about it a little bit more. Let's get onto the trail. And so the journey began. Here's Dewey to tell you about the trail. Black Bear Pass is an absolutely incredible trail with spectacular views, with close-ups of mining and waterfalls, but it is believed by some to be the most dangerous trail in Colorado. However, you probably already know that, so what I want to show you is why it has this dual-natured identity. In this video, we will show you the trail, the landscape, the dangerous weather, and what it's like to drive over it. By the end of the video, you will have seen some awesome rock crawling from our group of Colorado mall crawlers and you will have the knowledge of what to expect on this trail. You'll also know what skills you should have before attempting and how to safely get to tell your ride in a variety of vehicles. While we work our way up towards the good stuff, let me introduce you to my buddy's wheel on today. I believe the differences in these vehicles should give you enough information to figure out how your vehicle will act on Black Bear Pass. Currently leading us is the Toyota fanboy himself, Cotton, yet he is here today in a stock 2021 Ford Ranger. Now you may have seen Cotton challenge my Jeep in our Aldrich Lake Snow Wheel and Trail Guide. However, he next showed up in a Dodge Ram for snow camping, yet today he is here with his entire awesome family in a Ford Ranger. I'm not so sure he can continue to call himself a Toyota fanboy, but he did assure me the last time he did Black Bear Pass, which was a while ago, was in a Toyota 4Runner. Behind him is my pal Sean, who has taken his Cherokee Trailhawk to places you just wouldn't think it could go. You likely saw him on Wheeler Lake, but you may have missed him on Cliffhanger 2.0, where I think he pushed that KL to its limit. Sean is an incredible driver, but he does not hide the fact that he he absolutely hates shelf roads. That is my one concern for him on this trail as Black Bear has some of the worst shelf roads in Colorado. So we're going to see how he takes it in this video. Following Sean is my buddy Zach in his Cherokee XJ. Now Zach, like Sean, has been in a lot of our videos and he has been seen in both his Cherokee XJ as well as his black Cherokee Trailhawk. Now Zach is an incredible off-roader but he is also an awesome trail mechanic. If we have a problem, Zach will likely know how to fix it and it has already had some incredible recoveries in previous videos. Now in this video, Zach did drive overnight from Denver to wheel this trail with us, so I'm hoping he isn't too tired by the time we hit the tough stuff. Now I'm bringing up the rear in my stock 5 day old Jeep Wrangler, but I want to keep this video moving along so I don't waste your time. I'll tell you later why this trail is special to me, but for now let's get to that seasonal gate. There is so much we want to show you from this trail, but our goal is also to keep these guides moving along so you don't get bored before we get to maybe like an especially tricky section like what actually comes up in this video. So what we're going to do is release a complete two hour trail video in the future. This way we can keep this video moving, but for those of you who want just to see the complete trail or maybe a relaxing video to run in the background while you work, you'll have that too. Keep going, I'm filming you guys. We are now at the next waypoint of interest, the Seasonal Gate. Now I absolutely love both Funtrex books and Trails Off-Road, and I use their information to help make these guides accurate. When it comes to seasonal closures though, these two sources disagree slightly. Funtrex says the road is closed from October to May 15th, while Trails Off-Road says it is closed from November to late June. Simply, the truth is, it does vary every year. It's always a good idea to check with the San Miguel County Government webpage for the latest info. 
Also, you can get information from the County Sheriff Facebook page and it's really good about announcing closures. You can also get good info from the San Juan Mountain Trail Facebook group. However, I think that's enough on seasonal closures. Let's keep moving to our next point. This is our final climb to the top of Black Bear Pass. Now we're going to zip right through it as we are getting so close to the legendary sections of this trail. However, before you reach the summit, you will encounter a fork in the road where you can go either way. If you go right, it's steep, but it's relatively straightforward. Going left isn't as steep, but Zach did say there was a small rock feature available on that route. Once the trail rejoins, you have one final push to reach the top of the pass. Once you reach that beautiful summit, take some time in to soak it all in, because after this point, the trail gets much harder, but a lot more fun. Up to this point, the trail has been easy, although you probably wouldn't be wrong if you said that was moderate terrain. However, to break this trail down into three distinct parts, we're going to say what we just did was part one, the easy section. However, if part one was slightly challenging to you, you should turn around at the summit. The next part, the part that we're on now, is the moderate section, and that's going to be followed up by the third part, the difficult section. Before you start the second part of the trail, you should try to recheck the weather. Now we did have spotty cell service on Black Bear, but we had enough signal to check the weather. Definitely not enough signal to live stream though. Anyway, conditions can change quickly in the mountains, so it is important to keep an eye on the weather. As a subtle reminder that weather does change instantly here, I may switch between the beautiful day that we had on the 9th with the not so beautiful day that we had on the 21st. This is a good time to talk about how long it may take you to do the trail. Now Zach and I wheeled this for fun besides GoProing the trail on August 9th. It took about 2 hours and 10 minutes for us to drive it. This doesn't take into account the times we stopped to look at the sites like Black Bear Mine and the processing mill. Our time ended up being similar to what Funtrek's estimate was. However, it may take you longer as Trails Off-Road estimates about 3 hours to drive the trail. Hello again. The more likes, comments, and subscribers these fellows get, the more they can take off from their jobs to make videos such as this one. This shelf road looks intimidating as you crest over and see what you are heading towards. And as I said earlier, Sean is not a fan of shelf roads and the wet conditions are not helping the situation. Although the trail is a bit rougher than the first section's part of the trail, it is the shelf road to why I label this as moderate. If this section is tough for you, you should not venture past Black Bear Mine, which happens to be our next waypoint of interest. It also ends the second part of this trail guide. Once we get there, I'll tell you about Black Bear's history, and following that, we will start the final part of this trail, the fun, difficult section. We are now approaching the Black Bear Mine, which is also the end of part two of this guide. Now this is a great time to talk about the pass's history. Per the Colorado Trails book by Massey, Wilson, and Titus, this pass was originally known as Ingram Pass after J. Ingram. He established the Smuggler Union Mine in 1876. Now Black Bear Pass as a trail was developed in the late 1800s to of course provide access to Black Bear Mine. It's interesting to note that by the early 20th century, the trail had fallen into disrepair and was no longer transversible. But thanks to the Telluride Jeep Club, the pass was reopened as a 4x4 trail in 1959. We hope you enjoyed the first two sections of this trail, but we are moving on to our final stretch. This is the start of the difficult section, and even though part of this section is two-way, we suggest turning around here if you aren't planning on going to Telluride. However, we will show you where the one-way starts, but let's start with this optional obstacle first. If 
this is the first time you're seeing one of our videos, let me tell you how we make them. Although I've been off-roading for over 20 years, both on the east and west, I only consider myself a detail-oriented off-road enthusiast. Therefore, I am not serving the role of trail guide while filming. Thankfully, I'm surrounded by experienced and skilled off-roaders who allow me to focus on shooting the best video that we can for you. Speaking of that, I'm even more amateur at making videos, but I'm trying to learn everything that I can about making great videos. So if you have any suggestions for us, leave them in the comments. Anyway, we go into each day with a loose outline of what to expect, but our goal is to let the day unfold and tell the story as it happens. So let's say we have a breakdown like we had on Red Cone, Tin Cup, or Moab Sand Dunes. We'll film it, put it in the guide, and hopefully learn from it. Also, if we make any wheeling mistakes, they go into the guide also. However, we will study the footage and try to tell you how to do it better than we did. So you may have heard from Billy Bob on the off-road Facebook group that Black Bear is a piece of cake or it's just a dirt road. Unfortunately, I don't agree with Billy Bob and I think that last obstacle starts to show Black Bear's true nature. By the time I finish talking, we will be at the steps and those should absolutely be classified as difficult. The switchbacks which follow would absolutely be classified as dangerous. Therefore, this definitely should not be your first off-road trail. Unfortunately, people who are not ready for it end up going and they can end up like this or even worse, rolled over the cliff's edge. Now I don't mean to scare you, but it is happening, and you can end up with a potential $5,000 recovery fee. Even experienced off-roaders make mistakes on this trail as the extreme pucker factor interferes with their off-road decision making. So our goal will be to show you the right lines as well as how close you get to the edge. And by the end of the video, I'll tell you how to get the right experience to be ready for this trail. In a solid axle vehicle with a low center of gravity, you may get away with taking a bad line as I did, but it's still risky. I like Zach's line much better, and let's see how the Ranger and Trailhawk do it. Now I'm going to show you the entire clip of Sean while we discuss how to do it. First off, I think this is the hardest obstacle in Black Bear Pass and rollovers have happened here. I believe the line Sean has taken is one of the better lines because this allows you to step off the ledge without getting too sideways. I do know people have taken both the passenger and driver side lines and been alright, but if you have a high rollover risk, you are going to have to think about this obstacle based on your vehicle's performance. You also want to be careful when descending off these ledges to avoid making a hard break as that could send your momentum past your tipping point. I do believe it is a wise move to get outside and assess the obstacle from below as it will offer you a different perspective than if you just view it from above. Another good idea is to use a spotter, especially if you don't enjoy being so close to a cliff's edge. Ultimately, you will need to know how your vehicle will respond on an obstacle similar to this as modifications can alter a vehicle's characteristics. After completing that first obstacle, you only have a short drive to the next obstacle. Now I do think this one is easier than the previous one, but if you want more of a challenge, you can take the middle line which offers the biggest ledge. We chose to take it easy and we went passenger here as there is a gentle ramp off the obstacle. However, you do need to be careful not to go too far passenger as that would take you up the hill and potentially causing a rollover. Alright, once Sean finishes up with this obstacle, we only have a short drive further till we 
are on one of the most dangerous sections of trail, the final part of the steps. Now this section is what most people know as the steps as it is a very narrow shelf road which can feel extremely tippy. Now I'm not going to talk over the steps but I want you to remember that the key to doing them is staying more towards the cliff side. What happens here is sometimes people will get a little nervous of the edge and end up going too far passenger and this could potentially cause a rollover. Here at Ingram Falls, you may spy my JK in the background. Now this trail is special to me because it was the last trail I did in the JK and the first trail I did with the JL. Anyway, I think this spot is a great spot to gather your group prior to starting the next dangerous section, the switchbacks. Starting off from the falls though, be careful because that is a rollover point as if you hug the inside wall too much, people have rolled over onto their side as they leave this spot. If you live a life of make-believe, your life isn't worth anything until you do something that does challenge your reality. And to me, driving over Black Bear Pass is a real challenge, because it's life or death. We are on the approach to the final major challenge, the toughest switchback. This will be the first switchback you encounter following Ingram Falls, so let's talk about it while we make our way towards it. First, expect to make a couple of backup moves to safely navigate the turn. This is especially important for long wheel bases, like what you'll see the Ranger do. Next, be careful to not cut the turn too tight as there is a rock that jets out from the passenger side. A good driving tip for the switchback is to stay focused while paying extra attention to what gear you're in. We also think it is a wise move to use a spotter as you have a cliff with a 900 foot drop at this location. In case the spotter needs to park to spot, please remember these parking tips. First, fully apply the parking brake, then turn your wheels into the hillside. I had a weak parking brake in the JK and always did this except one time on Wheeler Lake and this happened. You definitely don't want this to happen on Black Bear. That's a nice good turn right there, keep that. All right, keep going nice and slow here. I'll let you know still. Back, back. Not all the way. Keep it there. Now we'll go all the way. Now take it nice and slow through there. You do that, you'll, your tire will be a couple feet away from the edge the whole time. You can cut it more now too. I can't go anymore. Okay, you're fine still. You got plenty of room still. There you go. You're good, I'll let you know when you're away from the edge or close to the edge. All right, there we go, nice and slow. A little more, a little more, a little more. All right, stop there. I'm down about another foot or two. A little more passenger. That's all I got. Okay, keep going with that and I'll let you know if you look like you need to take another switch back on her. You should start going that way pretty aggressively though, right about now. Yeah, let's take you back one more time. Let me show you what this switchback looks like from the front bumper, but as we do that, let me take a moment to thank these awesome off-roaders for joining me. I definitely don't say it enough, but these guys are awesome, and it's hard to make a trail guide like this without their help. Zach was an absolutely great spotter, even though he's like me and doesn't really enjoy spotting that much. Sean did great despite truly hating shelf roads. And that is no easy task as high pucker factor can cause great off-roaders to make mistakes. Okay, and Cotton. Alright, I guess I got a confession. Cotton still bleeds Toyota. He's working on getting that Land Cruiser of his working and his beautiful wife Tyler is still wheeling the one he used on Aldrich Lakes. 
He also may have just bought a old Toyota Celica. Anyway, these guys are awesome and I really appreciate them, but let's keep going with the trail guide. We now have 10 more switchbacks to navigate, but let's do that in highlight form so I can keep this trail guide focused. But the main point I want you to remember for navigating these 10 switchbacks is just don't let your guard up after you get through that tough switchback. Yes, everything after this is much easier, but it is still very dangerous. You're on a high shelf road and the danger is going to remain until you get to the bottom. Take your time, stay in low gear, and you'll get through it in no time. You see, there's no mystery to it. Nothing more complicated than learning the lines and going over them. We are almost to the bottom and there are still some great sites to check out as we continue on down. I'll continue to put the details on the screen of these interesting landmarks, but let's start to wrap this up by starting the trail review and breakdown. We are not going to spend much time on the review and breakdown, but I will say that we all love this trail and we definitely think it deserves to be a bucket list trail. Now we do think the biggest key is to not underestimate its difficulty. Please know that we do our best to show these trails as they are, but video will make a trail look easier than they may actually be. This is definitely not the trail for first time off-roaders or beginner off-roaders. We think you should get more experience before attempting. We recommend that you run the other San Juan area trails before attempting this one. We personally would start with Ophir Pass as it is one of the easier ones, but it offers a great shelf road to get some experience on. After successfully doing that one, you can move on to the other trails and gain additional off-roading experience which will help you when you try Black Bear Pass in the future. I'm not Morgan Freeman, but I approve of this trail guide. Oh, and you may like this other video from them. Thanks for watching.